his fun and outgoing spirit. He had a great heart. A man is being remembered after police say a constable shot and killed him while trying to arrest him. Now the constable faces charges. Police now call the deaths of a Kentucky couple and their two children a murder-suicide. The new details in the investigation. They paid a lot of money for it, but a family has not received some wedding video many months later. And we've learned the videography company has received complaints from other people. This is WQYT News at 6. Good evening to you. He was trying to serve a warrant at the time, but investigators say a Laurel County constable shot and killed the man he was arresting, and now a grand jury has indicted him. Constable Bobby Smith now faces a second-degree manslaughter charge for the March 4th shooting. Today, Phil Pendleton talked to the fiancé of the man killed. It's our top story at 6. Tracy Whittemore says she and her fiancé, Brandon Stanley, had big plans for the first weekend in March. We was going to get married the, the weekend that it happened. He got shot on a Friday. We was getting married on a Saturday. She says Constable Bobby Smith had been trying to track Stanley down, all because he had a warrant for his arrest on a failure to appear charge. Bobby wanted Brandon to come and meet him instead of coming and turning himself into the sheriff's office. Brandon wouldn't do it. Brandon ran from land. Then on Friday, March 4th, inside the store, police say Smith shot and killed Stanley. It's hard to deal with right now. I just want to see him pay for what he's done. According to the Laurel County Coroner's Office, preliminary autopsy reports show that Brandon Stanley died the result of two gunshot wounds to the thorax area. She says Brandon Stanley did have a checkered past, but she believes he was finally on the right track to turning his life around. When we had Brandon's layout, the preacher came over there to where we was at and said that Brandon had his hands up the whole time, that there was no reason for him to be shot and killed like this. Smith told us he was not able to discuss the case. He made a $50,000 bond and was never taken to jail. In Laurel County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. The constable will be arraigned in Laurel Circuit Court a week from today. Tonight, police have released new information about the deaths of a Kentucky couple and their two young children in their home. Investigators are now calling it a murder-suicide. Police say all four were found dead yesterday afternoon in their burning Louisville home. But the family once lived in Lexington. Kristen Kennedy has the latest on the investigation. Their neighbors in Louisville couldn't believe they were gone. Yesterday, it was they were a normal family, and then today, for this to happen, I mean, our our hearts go out to, and our prayers go out to the mother and the rest of their family. People in Lexington who had lived beside them for years said the same. They told us Brad and Billy Hedinger were a kind couple that had moved to Louisville less than two years ago. Their relatives confirmed the husband and wife and their two children were the four who died in the fire in the Saratoga Springs neighborhood Sunday. It's just a horrible thing to happen. To someone that you love. Billy was originally from Nicholasville. She worked for Baptist Health. She was just happy all the time. And her children were just absolutely dolls. They, they just were the cutest things, and, and she loved them dearly. She was a great mother to those children. Police revealed late Monday afternoon that the death of the family was a murder suicide. They say Brad Hedinger shot his wife and children, set the home on fire, then shot himself. The Hedinger's children were four and five. The oldest was a few days shy of his sixth birthday. They were like two little precious kids. They were beautiful and sweet and smart. In Lexington, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. Jefferson County Coroner's Office says the couple and the two children all had gunshot wounds to the head. Investigators say the children were found in their beds, the wife in the basement, and the husband on the first floor of the home. New tonight, a jury has found a man not guilty in the shooting death of a hunter in Clay County. The jury acquitted Dwight Hughes of all charges against him after a week-long trial. In 2014, investigators say Hughes shot Brian Griffin and Jason Roberts while they were turkey hunting. Griffin died, but Hughes survived. Investigators called the shooting an accident at first, but a grand jury later indicted Hughes on murder, assault, and wanton endangerment charges. Tonight, police need your help finding the person they say stole thousands of dollars worth of wheels from a Powell County car dealership. It happened earlier this month at Tanner Dodge in Stanton. Employees say that chrome wheels were taken from a Charger and a Challenger. 
And they say this is not the first time they've had a theft like this. It's bad enough that you struggle to, to keep your businesses profitable and keep employees on the payroll uh, to come in uh, you know, once, once every six months, once every four months, or once a year and have a $13,000 loss. The business is offering a $500 reward for information that leads to an arrest. With dry conditions across the bluegrass, some fire departments are asking people not to burn anything outside. The Lexington Fire Department has issued an open burning ban through 8 Wednesday morning. It includes refuse, cooking, and construction debris fires. Firefighters say all open burn permits are suspended during this time. They say dry, windy conditions could cause any fire to spread quickly. Firefighters had that problem last week at a Lexington business. Some rain would certainly help with those dry conditions, but is is any on the way? Meteorologist Jim Caldwell has an early check of your forecast. How about it? We are going to track some, but it's going to be a few days. And leading up to it, we likely run into winds that are going to be really whipping out there 20, 30, maybe even up to 40 miles per hour with some of the wind gusts in the coming days. All starts really overnight and into the day tomorrow, especially tomorrow. Low 50s out there right now. We're dry and we are sunny. And humidity levels, as mentioned, are very, very low today. And you'll see more upper 40s creeping in here over the next probably uh, 45 minutes or so as that sun gets a little bit lower into the sky. Our Defender Radar Network remains on the clear side. Now, we've also got the satellite turned on, so you're going to see a little bit of animation there coming from some of the clouds. Most of them have been uh, scattered throughout uh, the area through the day today. Let's track where we're going to see the coldest temperatures tonight. That's going to be across parts of southeastern Kentucky where we have a freeze warning and a frost advisory highlighted in some of our counties. Upper 20s and low 30s for a few of you. Here's the highlighted spots with the lows for tonight. By early tomorrow morning, you see that pocket of 20s. A little bit warmer here in central Kentucky. However, patchy frost possible. But we're going to forget about the frost, though. We've got a lot of warm air coming at us as well. We will track it, Sam, coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Jim. Well, right now, thousands of brides to be across the state are planning for their big day, and many will hire a videographer to record the ceremony and the wedding highlights. A few months ago, a mother and a bride contacted us, saying they paid a Lexington videographer hundreds of dollars last summer, and they're still waiting for the video. As we looked into their claims, more complaints surfaced. Tonight, how you can make sure this doesn't happen to you, and what the videographer is saying about the missing wedding videos. It's a story that's new at 6. The venue was wonderful. The only trouble is we don't have the video record of it. On July 18th in Winchester, Delana's daughter Erica had the wedding of her dreams. But that wonderful day is tainted. Eight months later, she has plenty of wedding photos, but not the complete video her mother paid $1,300 for. We had a contract that said at a certain period we would have it, that we would have certain things, and we don't have those yet. The contract with Matt Hoverter Videography stated within eight weeks of the reception, the project would include full editing to compile footage into a six to nine minute highlight video of the bride and groom prep, ceremony, and reception. Also included will be a full video of the ceremony. Delana says they also had an agreement to include the entire father-daughter dance. Eight weeks went by, and Delana says they received nothing. She says her phone calls, emails, and a certified letter were never answered. I mean, I can certainly allow for delays, but he never called to say it was being delayed because of this and whatever. In October, Erica reached out to Matt Hoverter by social media, and he emailed a link to a highlight video. But still, no DVD of the full ceremony, no video of the entire father-daughter dance. He asked for my address on two different occasions that he could mail it and said he would send me, give me the tracking number saying that he had sent it, but I never got that either. Uh, it was frustrating, yeah, knowing that my mom had put a lot of work into it and um, had paid for it. Erica's mother says she hired Hoverter for the video job because his website looked professional and he came across like a good Christian man. His website has glowing reviews from brides about their videos and includes samples of his work. What the bride and mother didn't do was check with the Better Business Bureau about any complaints. So we did. This company has an F rating. Heather Clary of the Better Business Bureau says it's not the complaints that are so troubling, but the lack of response from the business. Sure, businesses are going to get complaints, but if a business wants to make things right, if they realize something has gone wrong or at least provide a response or an explanation, that's a plus. 
when the business does not even bother to do that at all, it makes you wonder as a customer whether you're going to have confidence in this business. Last month, WKYT reached out to Hoverter to get his side of the story. He told us by text he had hired someone to take care of his communication and deliverables, but says that person didn't do their job. Quote, I am getting in contact with my clients to see who is missing any of their deliverables. I promise I'll find out who they are, and I will write this. I am new to owning a business. I will make mistakes. When I do, I want to own them and make them right. Right after our interview with Eric and her mother here at the station, they met with Matt Hoverter, and he gave them three DVDs. But they say when they got home, the DVDs did not have the full wedding ceremony or the complete father-daughter dance, just the wedding highlight video. And since that interview last month, two more mothers and their brides have contacted the BBB to complain they paid Matt Hoverter videography hundreds of dollars for videos, but never received them. Within a period of about 12 months or so, we received five customer complaints uh, involving not receiving what they paid for. The other complaints filed with the Better Business Bureau include a company that says Hoverter delivered extremely poor still photos and has not delivered the video footage he contracted to do. He has been paid in full and for the last six weeks has not returned any phone calls or emails. And this complaint from a sorority. He sent out the video after he was threatened with a lawsuit. And another complaint to the BBB about Hoverter videography. I want the rest of the video footage that he agreed to give us and has not. Otherwise, I feel he owes us a partial refund. If Delana had to do it over, she would have fully researched the videographer company, asked for references, and checked with the Better Business Bureau. Usually I'm the one telling the kids, uh, be wary, don't click on this, check that, you know, and here I am just falling victim, being gullible to what someone's telling me over the phone, and I really thought I could trust it. And for the last couple of weeks, we have again reached out to Matt Hoverter. He has not returned our calls or emails. And as of today, he still has an F rating with the Better Business Bureau. New tonight, the University of Kentucky has a new warning for horse farm owners about eastern tent caterpillars. UK leaders say a tent caterpillar egg hatch was reported last week in Scott County. They say this year's first hatch is a week earlier than last year. Now they say the number of tent caterpillars have been increasing the last few years. The eastern tent caterpillar is linked to mare reproductive loss syndrome, which hit the horse industry hard about 15 years ago. A new restaurant is coming to Lexington and it's creating dozens of new jobs. Tzatziki's Mediterranean Cafe will open April 18th on Southland Drive. Owners say it will offer fresh and healthy food in a fast, casual atmosphere. Before the restaurant opens, owners want to hire about 50 people for positions ranging from cashiers to kitchen staff. If you're interested, you can apply at the restaurant.